The U.S. debt ceiling crisis deal passed its first major hurdle in Congress today. The agreement has survived a crucial procedural vote to set parameters for the decisive one tomorrow. Now, the preliminary voting for act has passed in the Congress with a 13-member committee, seven voting in favor, six against the bill. Tomorrow, the bill will need a simple majority to clear the 435-strong member house and move towards its final test at the Senate. Two hardline Republicans, Shrip Roy and Ralph Norman, joined four progressive Democrats who chose to vote against the act. Why are we here at this hour? So we're bending the curve down off of the higher COVID levels of spending in order to extract an agreement to push the debt ceiling all the way to January 1st, 2025 in the middle of a lame duck, which by most accounts would amount to maybe four trillion ish of increase. And I'm trying to figure out how that's good for the American people. That's what I'm trying to figure out. A block of 20 conservative Republicans have announced an opposition to the act condemning it as a compromise on the part of House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Chip Roy and Ralph Norman have expressed their decision to vote against the bill if aspects of it were not amended. This could potentially torpedo the bill tomorrow, pushing the American economy an inch closer to tailspin. Both Democratic President Joe Biden and House Speaker McCarthy have assured enough votes to pass the act into law before the 5th of June. Why are we here at this hour? Because Republicans have brought us to the brink of a potential default, the first in our country's history. And as the chairman, the former chairman, our, our ranking member, so eloquently noted in the beginning, this is a manufactured crisis. No question about it. House Republicans are in control. You have the gavels. Now the House is controlled by the Republicans with a nine-seat margin, while Democrats retain Senate control with a two-seat margin for it to become a law. The act will need 218 votes on the House floor. The Republican leadership is bracing for this with an expectation of 40 to 60 of their 222 members voting in favor of this act tomorrow. If the deal fails to pass through in Congress tomorrow, the U.S. government will no longer have access to funds that it needs to pay off its debt. The failure to meet the June 5th deadline could have a cascading effect that could end in fully-fledged federal default. The repercussions would be disastrous for the United States and the global economy. For more on this, our correspondent Susan Tehrani has sent us this report from New York. Listen in. It was an instant win for Kevin McCarthy when a key Republican said that he would support a rule to set the perimeters for the debate. The very powerful House Rules Committee voted to adopt that rule, clearing a major hurdle for the bill to go on the House floor for a final vote. The timeline to get this bill passed by both chambers is extremely tight. Lawmakers are working around the clock to avert a catastrophic default ahead of June 5th. That's when the Treasury Department said that it would run out of money. In the House, a wide range of members from both parties, mostly moderates, have indicated that they will support the bill to avoid a default. Some Republicans even believe that they are pushing towards a 150 Republican vote or more. If that's the case, that's a lot more Republicans than Kevin McCarthy banked on. Susan Tavrani reporting from New York for We On, World is One. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now, get all the news on the move.